Well, it's great to be back into the Boston area, which is kind of our honorary headquarters. I spend more time talking to executives around the Boston area and biotech than any place else in the world. Um, certainly a, a hub and a real hot spot, as we've seen uh, repeatedly uh, in Fierce Biotech. About halfway through our interviews for this year's Fierce 15, it struck me just how much risk this crop of top private companies is taking on. There are programs for interferon-free hepatitis C drugs, pioneering early stage work on Alzheimer's, obesity drugs, gene therapies, and more. These are all areas which have taken a heavy toll among biopharma companies. You don't have to work at a big pharma company to know that your money can go up in smoke when one of your bright new prospects turns out to potentially present toxicity threats to patients. And you don't have to work at a top R&D organization to know that of all the Alzheimer's programs to come along over the years, only three have made it to the market. None of them very effective, and more than 100 have failed. In some cases, like gene therapy, new technology and plenty of additional clinical work has helped eliminate some of the fears that periodically place the field on the industry's back burner. In the case of Alzheimer's, new approaches have forced investigators to define a new ideal profile among patient populations, while others are skirting the amyloid beta hypothesis altogether in search of new ways to improve cognition and physical function for millions of patients. In part, I like to see our embrace of risk reflect the Fierce 15 tradition. We like to recognize biotechs which have boldly set out to blaze new paths. And we recognize that in industry like drug development, not everyone makes it to the finish line. But there's more here than a willingness to accept risk. We're seeing a new day in the biotech industry where you either get to tackle something big or you never get the financing you need to advance a program. And R&D risk is just one element of the forces biotechs face. Regulatory and payer risk present their own daunting prospects. And anyone who wants to run the gamut of challenges has to try something new and something inherently risky. One of the executives for this year's Fierce 15 asked me recently how many companies we consider before we select the final list. It's not as easy an answer as you might think. There were more than 200 nominations filed from readers, and I promise you we considered each and every one of them before putting this project to bed. But there were also plenty of instances of one-on-one -on -one requests, <coughs> emails, phone calls, and lots of tweets. That, can, uh, that all comes with the territory of writing a daily report on the global industry. And every time a biotech does something remarkable, executive editor Ryan McRod and I will file it away in the memory banks for further reflection. After doing this for 10 years, it'd be nice to say we perfected the process, but perfection doesn't exist in the biotech field. We strive to do great work, like you do. If anything, the growing appetite for risk reflected in this year's Fierce 15 raises the odds against successful drug development, but improve the odds of a genuine breakthrough. So, it is with great honor that I now present this year's Fierce 15 uh, in recognition, a lot of the executives of these companies are also here, and after I'm done running through the Fierce 15, I'd like them to come up for a group shot and a round of applause. Our first company, is AC Immune, based in Lausanne, Switzerland. Clinical focus, Alzheimer's. Alkeus Pharmaceuticals, based in Boston, Massachusetts. Clinical focus, Stargardt disease, the leading cause of juvenile macular degeneration. Angiochem, based in Montreal. Clinical focus, CNS diseases. Aragon Pharmaceuticals, based in San Diego. Clinical focus, cancer drugs. Bluebird Bio, based in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Clinical focus, gene therapy. Celadon Corporation, based in San Diego. Clinical focus, cardiovascular disease. Ember Therapeutics, based in Boston, Massachusetts, clinical focus, obesity and diabetes. Inenta Pharmaceuticals, based in Watertown, Massachusetts, clinical focus, hepatitis C. In vivo, I missed one. Oh, a password. 
Oh, there we go. Sorry about that. Uh, in vivo pharmaceuticals, based in Watertown, Massachusetts, clinical focus, Alzheimer's and schizophrenia. Foundation Madison, based in Cambridge, Massachusetts, clinical focus, cancer diagnostics. Mersana Therapeutics, based in Cambridge, Massachusetts, clinical focus, antibody drug conjugates. Mirogen Therapeutics, based in Boulder, Colorado, clinical focus, microRNA drugs for cardiovascular and muscle diseases. Okeros, based in Basel, clinical focus, infectious diseases. Prosensa, based in Leiden, the Netherlands, clinical focus, Duchenne muscular dystrophy. And finally, Seaside Therapeutics, based in Cambridge, Massachusetts, clinical focus, autism, fragile X syndrome, and other neurodevelopment disorders. Uh, a number of us are going to be having a conversation uh, about this, uh, about the elements of success in today's biotech industry. Uh, at a panel at 5.15, and I'd encourage any of you that uh, would like to get to know some of these executives better to come by for that. Right now, I'd, I'd like to give a big round of applause to everybody.